was one nurse that was really mean and like really like didn't want to deal with me kind of thing and I had to tell her to bring me my baby because I breastfed and she wanted me to bottle feed and I said no I'm breastfeeding I do not want to bottle feed give me my baby bring me my baby to feed him because she was like well I'm feeding him I'm like no you're not feeding my baby I am currently making a, cho a choice regarding my health care now. I am trying to decide whether or not to have an internal pump placed that will control spasticity related to my cerebral palsy. Sam uh, is nonverbal, and so uh, in trying to communicate with him, about what's going on with him physically can be a challenge sometimes. But with that said, you can talk to him uh, with yes, no questions and, uh, and, and, and he has ways of getting your attention and asking you questions as well. I'll do a scenario and I'll say, hey Jay, you know, if I'm sick and I need help, what would I do? And I'll put out a whole scenario for them and then we'll do a role play. And then we communicate that way to figure out if he needs to go to the doctor. I use them as sounding boards when I need to make health care or any other major decision. But as far as making any sort of major decisions, I usually <laughs> go online and then I usually make decisions with the help of pros and cons. So how did you make the choice for the bariatric surgery? Because I talked to a couple of my friends who had it done because I wanted to lose weight. Did you have anyone help you make that decision? Yeah, it was my mom and Nigel, Paul, and a lot of my friends. I started working with Charles back in 2011, and that was that was during a, during a time when Charles came to the basic decision that he needs to really lose some weight. And what what we did, we came up with um, a number of strategies. One, first of all, his diet, and that that was basically a, a, a group decision because with 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 anything that working with someone with a disability, you gotta get them in, involved also. Because if you don't get them involved and don't get their, their opinion, their, their, their feedback, whether or not it's a positive feedback or a negative one, you, it won't work. It was a group decision and we came up with changing his diet. Well, Charles was uh, really overweight and he became a diabetic from being overweight. So uh, Charles was, uh, wanted to lose weight. He applied to have the surgery done and they uh, denied him. Uh, some of it was because he was too much overweight. He had to lose weight before he could even be considered for it and they had their hesitations about having a uh, person with a handicap having that surgery. When he lost a hundred pounds he reapplied and said, see, I can lose the weight. Can I have the surgery? And I had a proton, because I got that, I got um, night up a couple years ago, and then I told him, I, wanted, I went and tried it back, and they proved me, because I worked out and worked out and proved him I wanted to lose the weight. It's a team effort, and it's a constant reminding, reminding him of his goals, not, not ours, his goals. It's very important that he has family support, uh, not only me, but he has his niece and nephews that support him, and uh, his sister. So, you know, if he wants to lose weight, okay, Charles, we're gonna work with you.
they were they were letting me make small <laughs> and maybe not so small decisions to prepare me for a <laughs> eventual adult life in a way that was manageable and meaningful. But the most important thing, you know, when we we always ask, as I did here today, you know, Sam, is it okay that we talk about this? You know, is it okay that um, the doctor listens to your heart right now, puts a stethoscope on your chest? Mm. Those kinds of things, we, mm -hmm. we always um, get his permission and his acceptance mm -hmm. before we proceed. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we want it always to be understood and always clear that, you know, he has um, right to his space and to who touches him, when and how. And, uh, and he's not shy about letting us know if he's not okay with something, and we want that, you know, absolutely. And sometimes you come in and you're pretty wound up because maybe, you know, your kid's really sick, or maybe you haven't slept in days, or, you know, or your, um, you know, your, your, your child is, has, hasn't slept in days as well and, and is going through some horrible um, physical experience and, and you've done everything you can and nothing's working. Uh, you're exhausted, you're at wit's end, you're scared, and you don't always, you're not always at your best in communicating when, when all of that is going on. So taking a minute and uh, letting the patient and the, the patient's advocates decompress, communicate, I think makes a huge difference in having an effective course of care. 1967, I had the hip fusion and doctors had, had been watching my hip for about 10 years and I was about to turn 21. So they needed to operate a complicated part was I woke up in a body cast and no one told me I would. So I learned a lot about what I needed to do in talking to doctors. I needed to advocate for myself and ask people how I would come out of the operation when I had my neck fusion, uh, that wasn't that difficult because I did a lot of talking and asked questions about what to expect. I think it's really important that health professionals, doctors, nurses, whoever, whoever, doesn't just make a judgment call on the person with a disability because their language isn't exactly right or they look different or uh, any of those things that people get judged by, that they assume competence and they assume that what they say is understood knowing that the, if there is a question, if there is a problem, that usually there is a mother or a support person, someone that will help to, to um, make sure that it's understood by that person. For medical professionals who have the opportunity to work with a patient with uh, some form of disability or range of disabilities, it's not, I don't think, that different than necessarily working with any other patient. 
Um, I think what happens is our own assumptions get in the way. And if we peel that back and just go, wait a second, I'm dealing with a person here who has a medical issue. Let's respect that individual. Let's talk to that individual. Let's, let's have a conversation with the people that are there supporting that individual. That's one of the things I always say when I meet a new doctor and it's new to me. I say, you can talk to me. My support person is right here and I use them if I don't understand something, but I'm right here and you can talk to me first. I think that they just tend to like look at that person and I'm like, so I say it immediately. Doesn't matter what kind of doctor it is, I say, you can talk to me.